I want to show you something. I'm going to answer your question, but I got to kind of build this up a little sure. bit. And he said, have you seen any of this? And this bunch of three ring binders that had just come in. And it was uh, infrared photographs of overflights at Rocky Flats. And it was, they were dated like August of 1989. Well, I remembered that Ed Goldberg, who was the acting area manager for Rocky Flats, who replaced Earl Whiteman uh, right before the search, um, had ordered up infrared. And it was uh, MSS photography. Uh, multi-spectral scanning, so it was color. And he's, the, the point of it was, is he said, look at this. We have above, ground, uh, above background levels of strontium and cesium. And I said, okay, first off, what's above background levels? Because there shouldn't be any. <laughs> he says, well, there has to be some because over the years we've had above ground testing throughout the world and with the prevailing winds just about everywhere has these chemicals. I said okay so why is this here? He says well then you have to understand that strontium-90 and cesium-137 together is indicia of a critical mass and I knew exactly what he was talking about. That meant that there was a nuclear reaction out there at Rocky Flats. And because I looked it up, the half-life of both those elements is about 30 years. It had to be within a reasonable amount of time. Nasty carcinogens, both of them. And I don't remember if it was just isolated to the plant site itself or off-site, but um, the, fact of, the fact that I saw the photographs, I saw the charts, and it hadn't. And I went to uh, a Department of Justice attorney and talked to him about it, as we did because we had a task force. And I was told that they weren't interested in anything like that, so that wasn't pursued. And again, that was a political reason because I believe that in December of 1989 there was a big confab in D.C., and I believe it was agreed that they were going to work out this Rocky Flats case to nothing, and. What I didn't realize till later is that the government agreed that there was no physiological harm caused by the operations at Rocky Flats, which isn't true. And that fits why they don't want to know about the strontium and the cesium. So I've reviewed materials over the years about the cleanup, and I don't remember seeing this report mentioned. I've in particular looked up to see if strontium 90 and Cesium-137 were constituents that they were looking for to clean up. I don't remember them cleaning those, showing those as a cleanup. So I would say that DOE has either covered it up or they've altered other reports and they've buried this, re this particular data and it's never seen the light of day. And I'll look, them right, I'll, look, I'll look anybody in the government right in the face, eye to eye, and I'll tell them that. They're a liar. Because I saw it. I know it exists. And it still pose a threat today? Well, I'm not that kind of a scientist. I'm, I'm a police science, police scientist, but I'm not a, a, a chemical engineer. But I can give you my common sense. And I say, yes, it's still a, it's still a threat. Because we're not just talking about the half-life being 30 years you've still got to project it out over quite a few more decades before it's, and who knows, I mean, no scientist is, has told us what the acceptable levels are out of the, uh, you know, working with uh, radionuclides. This is man-made, and for them to define what we can tolerate and what we can't tolerate, I haven't seen it. I mean, even watching documentaries about the first guy that came up with the, uh, levels of tolerance for radionuclides, he changed it. He got fired by the government because he wanted to make it tighter. And the government doesn't want to make it tighter. Government wants to, they want to call it clean nuclear, just like the Obama administration. I couldn't believe it. He gave an $8 billion loan to Georgia to build a nuclear plant. What is he doing? He's, it's not clean. It's not clean. And, and making nuclear weapons is not clean. 
It hasn't been. It never has been. That's why there's national security to shroud the operations so that no one knows what's going on or, or how dirty it is. So right there you've got cesium-137 uh, uh, which you can ingest and it can take 10, 20, or 30 years before you actually get cancer. So it's not instant. And then you've got the bone seeker, strontium-90, that's going to go after you like plutonium does. And the second reason I believe that it's not, it's not inhabitable, and I even feel bad about the animal, animals going out there, because they can, they can brush up against this stuff and move it. They're burrowing, some of the animals are burrowers, so they're putting it down into the ground. Is because I did the overflights over Rocky Flats during the shutdown, and, and the public was told that a lot of things weren't happening that were. And actually, I have a video for you. Um, this video was the video that we shot back in December, on December 15, 1988. It sat in a safe until about 2005 when it was used as a plaintiff's exhibit in a local uh, federal civil trial. And so now it's, now it's public. But no one has gotten a copy of it and said, see, this is what we were talking about 20 years ago, because they don't care. Um, I find that sometimes the public uh, doesn't want to remember things like that. Because this was a, a very sensational case a long time ago. It really was. It was the number one. I remember the, when the Denver Post was around, it was the number one, case, or number one story that, that they covered. So it was very, very big deal. And because of that, and because I reviewed the Waste Stream Identification and Characterization Report, and that was submitted under a consent decree by the Colorado Department of Health and the Department of Energy and Rockwell at Rocky Flats tried to comply with that consent decree and basically under oath they provided this 29 volume document that I reviewed and I found that the processes of the plant either went into the air, ventilation or incineration, or they went into the water, the, the sanitary system. And that sanitary system then deposited out to a pond. And there were some, a lot of regulatory issues that need some explaining, but basically the plant was a zero, um, I forget the vernacular for it, but it's they're basically the, they're, they were a zero discharger. In other words, Rock, Rockwell told the health department and the, and the EPA, we don't discharge off, off site. And they were liars. In fact, they pled guilty under criminal charges to causing uh, sheet flow runoff from their spray irrigation.